yes, the title of the video is a little bit clickbaity. <laughs> you try and make Autodesk news sound interesting. Oh, that sounds like a you problem. Oh, I don't know. It is true, the Autodesk showcase is actually back from the dead after four years. Not for everyone. But it kind of is. It, it is. I mean, you have to bear with me. But before that, this video is brought to you by me. If you're thinking about subscribing to a new Autodesk software license anytime soon, or if you're soon to be renewing an existing Autodesk subscription that you've already got, please do consider using my TFI paid referral link, which is in the description. That'll take you to your local Autodesk store. It won't cost you any more to subscribe using my link, but... I'll get a little cut of the commission, which will serve as vital support for the channel. Thank you very much in advance for your consideration. Links in the description. But the news is that Autodesk have made a change to their previous version support. As of today, October 26th, Autodesk support, if you're a paying customer, the current version, which is 2021, and three versions back. So 2020, 2019, and 2018. As of November the 2nd, this is the change. Autodesk will support the current version and then five versions back. So they'll support 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017, and 2016, which brings Showcase back into contention because it died in 2017. So if you have a product design suite and you're still paying maintenance for product design suite, so if you have product design suite 2021, you will still be able to use, as of November the 2nd, your product design suite 2017, which brings Showcase back into life but it's not all rose in the garden mate because there's some things to talk about let's get into it so this is the news i'll link it in the description so you can head on over to the post itself we've heard your feedback that you need more than three previous versions for a long-term project so starting november the 2nd 2020 autodesk is expanding version access for all customers on subscription and maintenance plans that's key expanding it for customers so if you've got an expired dead maintenance plan that you let lapse and you don't pay for it anymore, this doesn't apply to you. Autodesk deem a customer as someone who pays them regularly and pays them every year. If you're not paying them every year, Autodesk do not treat you or deem you as a customer. Uh, so yeah, Autodesk is expanding version access for customers uh, for the latest release and up to five versions back as of November the 2nd. This makes it easier for teams to collaborate on the same version throughout a project. Uh, how do I access my previous versions? Ah, that'll just be the same as always. You go into your Autodesk account, you go download the product, you click the drop down, you'll see five versions back instead of three. So that's the news, mate. Um, it was linked here. Uh, this is the, another post, which I'll link in the description. But a key part of this is this here. Please note, because it's not in the main article. Although we are expanding access to five versions back, only the current and three versions back will be eligible for Autodesk technical support. Right, so there's a few things I need to talk about here. That's the news. That's all you wanted to hear about. Sure, thanks. It's, see you later. Toodles and all that. Uh, there's a few things I need to talk about. The first thing that jumped to my mind here was what about patches, hotfixes, and critical security vulnerabilities that didn't get applied to the products that have been end of life? I'll give you an example. Vault 2016 or AutoCAD 2016. If Vault 2016 is coming back to life, it has been end of life for the last two years. Vault 2016 went end of life about two years ago. In those two years that have gone by since it went end of life, there could have been critical vulnerabilities which were patched in Vault that have been applied to Vault 2021, 2019, 2020, 2018, for example. The, today's version of three versions back. That critical vulnerability did not get applied to Vault 2016. Vault 2016, though, is getting brought out of it's getting dug up out of its grave and it's being brought back into production. Okay, you can't log technical support queries on it, but what if there's a critical security vulnerability in it that it needs a patch for that's already been patched in products that were currently supported? Are those patches going to be retrospectively applied to these products that are now back in production? I don't know. I've posed the question to Autodesk. They're not going to get me an answer in any uh, anytime soon, really. I think this is going to have to get bounced around all kinds of places before they get an answer to this one. So that'll probably get posted in one of these forum posts. So that's one of the questions that I had. Hi, this is Neil during editing. Well, well Autodesk did get back to me regarding that question. Uh, and the, the answer was pretty much what I expected. And that was they will not be applying security patches for those two previous versions that they've just dug up from the grave. Which begs some questions. And that is, what, what if, if someone digs up a copy of AutoCAD 2016 installs it on Windows 10 October 2020 update and it doesn't work. Maybe Windows or Microsoft updated a part of Windows .NET Framework module in AutoCAD 2016 just does not work 
at all. The entire user interface is just dead because it wasn't supported. They can't log a technical support query. So how are they going to get AutoCAD 2016 to work on the current only today's Windows 10? Like that, that the, they've got every right to use. What if the only current supported versions of Windows don't work with AutoCAD 2016? The same applies to the likes of Vault. You know, it's well known, it's not unprecedented for current versions of Windows 10 to completely break internet information services for all versions of Vault. What happens there? What if someone digs out Vault 2017, tries to install that, and it's completely broken on today's versions of Windows? How are they going to get them patched if you're not offering technical support? I don't know. Maybe they'll make exceptions for those, but that sets dangerous precedents when they start making exceptions because then people start getting entitled to have, ex you know, they, they, well, I, you made an exception for them. What about me? <laughs> Which is fair enough. That's absolutely fair enough. So I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to those. But with Showcase, for example, if you've got Product Design Suite 2021, then you can access Showcase because that is in Product Design Suite 2017 and 2016. It doesn't apply, though, if you switched your Product Design Suite over to a collection. If you switched from a suite to a collection, you would have lost Showcase, so you won't be able to get at it. What I don't know if this applies to is anyone who bought Showcase as a standalone product. And I'm saying Showcase is an example, but this applies to any other product that might have happened to have died sort of roughly four or five years ago. Uh, if you bought that product as a standalone on its own license and died in 2017, are you able to get at it? Because people with a sweet can, can you? That, that would be a bit unfair if somebody can access it backwards with a suite, but the guy who bought it as a standalone product can't get at it, that would seem unfair. But Showcase is a good example. That's been totally dead, end of life, for four years. There's four years worth of Microsoft operating system updates. There's a very good chance that will not work at all on today's Windows 10. But it's now eligible to be used as part of this five versions back thing. You've got to support that. Okay, you're not offering technical support, but you've got to make sure it works. So... How does that fit into the we don't offer technical support thing? I don't know. But either way, it's a, this is a good thing. Uh, the reasons for why they've done this, uh, I, I don't care. There's speculation about, you know, it's, yeah, sure, mixing projects and, you know, people who are needing to collaborate with teams who don't have the current version, people still using five versions back and all that kind of stuff. Sure, whatever. It, I, don't, I don't know. I don't really care. Uh, either way, it's just a good thing that this is happening. It's, it's only going to be a benefit you know, and it also takes the heat off people who've got massive implementations. Uh, it takes the heat off them upgrading, you know, because that those three years, mate, they come around fast. And before you know it, you're like, crap, we're on 2018. We need to get upgraded quick because come three months time, we're going to be on an unsupported version. So it takes the heat off a bit. So, yeah, that's a good thing. And that happens on November the 2nd. And I'll, like I say, I'll link, the, I'll link these articles in the description below. So that's it, mate. Thanks very much. Hope you found that useful. Uh, if you did, press like. That tells YouTube's algorithm that the video was good and that other people like you would be interested in seeing it. Like I said, it's difficult to get people to like Autodesk News. What? It sounds like a you problem. <laughs> I'm doing my best. Anyway, thanks very much. And I'll see you in the next one.